Hello everybody, welcome back for video eight in this series of, um, I am doing a practice run on lecture plans I have for a summer camp of teenagers, uh, week long game dev camp. Uh, so I'm gonna cover the materials or look at the concepts and make sure I get all the pieces and stuff. And I decided I'd um, go ahead and share my videos too, if you're seeing this. So in the past couple of videos, we were getting our character together. Uh, the very first draft of our character, so we're almost to the point that we can start doing stuff in a game engine. But I want to do a couple animations first. So over here in Blender, now that our character's there, and we made the skeleton a parent of the skin, and then just like you, you position the skeleton, and the skin follows, follows along with it. And there's going to be some more stuff later, depending on how time goes. I have things that I don't think we'll fit in a week because we want to get practice and get the good concepts down really good uh, and get a good base foundation. So we'll probably get that far, but there is more coming on the on this later. Uh, for the rough draft, we need a couple quick animations. So up here in the top, I'm going to come over to the animation tab. You notice we have a couple windows. Uh, we can we could just set up our main window that way. Uh, this is just sort of preset default settings for it. So we have a preview version, which is not in, uh, not showing the materials, but that'll be fine. We just need the shape. I might turn this one to materials so we can kind of tell what's what. Uh, the colors help me orient things. And down at the bottom, we have a dope sheet. And a dope sheet is where we control our animation. And if we wanted to do just one animation for the thing, that would that would be enough. But we want to do several animations. So if you come to this drop down right here and switch this to action editor, this is where we create multiple small animations, the little looping things. So I want to create a new animation. You'll see the big button that says new here. And maybe first off, we'll just do an idle animation. So this is going to be our character idle. And after you give it a name, this little shield looking icon here, that's for a fake user. Uh, the software will try to optimize things. So if you have a bunch of actions that aren't assigned to anything, uh, at some point Blender will try to delete those when you close and reopen the file. So we want to click the shield to make sure it gives it a fake user. Let me unclick it. So with it unselected, if we look at the list, we see the name. If we click that shield, we see the name with a little F beside it. That means there's a fake user assigned to this so that it is applied and Blender won't try to delete it when optimizing things. Uh, so for an idle animation, I'm just going to kind of bob the head and wave the arms. So I'm going to grab the head bone and I've found it can be useful to move the mouse out a little bit so you have a nice movement. If you're right here close and push rotate, and rotate it just a little bit of movement on the mouse moves that bone a long ways but if we come out we get a bit of a lever arm so that we have to move quite a quite a ways with the mouse to get just a little movement with the bone so i'm gonna start in the rest position so if we hit a to select all then alt r will put everything in the rest position and then push the letter i for insert and this is how we put in keyframes so frame number one we want to insert a keyframe that keeps track of all these bone positions. So we push I and insert location, rotation, and scale. Our transform data, that's going to be one of the most important in this series about game development, is our transform data. So location, where is it at, how is it rotated, and how is it scaled. So insert a keyframe for each one of those. And um, I guess uh, 20 frames for an idle animation sounds good. So what I like to do is go up to frame 21, which you can also just click and drag this back and forth. That 21 is one frame after this animation is going to end, so that when it loops back around, this is going to line up with the first frame. So with everything selected, A to select everything, and the buttons do different stuff depending on where your mouse is at. So make sure your mouse is in the window with the or the panel with the bones. Select, hit A to select all, and then I to insert a keyframe. And now our 
first frame of the animation and one frame after the animate where the animation loops at line up perfectly. Um, and I'll just go to the middle somewhere around frame 10 and make some adjustments for uh, our animation. So maybe halfway through we're waving our arms. So I'm going to grab the the upper arm on both sides. So hold shift to do multiple selections and then push R to rotate and then hit X so that we can only rotate around the X axis. No matter where we move our mouse, we're only allowed the X rotation. So I'll just move the arms forward a little and then I'll grab both forearms and same thing. So R to rotate and then X to restrict us to the X axis and bring those forward. So the arms sway forward and I'll get the head bob in a second. I want to do it in a couple passes. So now push A to select all the bones and insert that as a keyframe and the full transform data, location, rotation, and scale. Um, so now somewhere in between, about halfway to that, maybe frame seven will work. I'm going to grab just the head bone and push R and rotate that forward a little. Then A to select all the bones and insert a keyframe here. And then oh, somewhere around halfway to the end of the animation. Again, I'm just like the head bone, push R, rotate it back a little like his head's bobbing. A selects all the bones, I inserts a keyframe, and we want location, rotation, and scale. So now we've stored different positions that all our bones will be in at a particular frame. So if we go back to the beginning and hit run, there's our idle animation. It's just kind of bobbing his head, waving his arms, waiting for us to move the character. So that'll work. That gives us one animation. I'll stop that, go back to the beginning. And now we need a second animation for walking. So make sure we have an idle set to a fake user so that Blender doesn't try to optimize that out of us. And click new to get a new one. And now with that new one selected, I'm going to come over here and right click around the frame numbers and delete the keyframes. And I'll go back into it. And you can see our idle animation is still there. Our new one is just a completely blank animation again. And I'll call this walk. If I can spell walk correctly. And once again, give it a fake user so Blender doesn't try to optimize that out of us. So now I want to set up a uh, sort of a walking position. So I don't want to start with the rest position this time. So I'll start with um, maybe the left leg forward. So I'll select that upper bone for the leg, rotate, R to rotate, and X. So we only rotate around the X axis. Kind of bend that leg forward like he's taking a step. Grab the lower leg, R, X. There's the character stepping forward. And when that leg's stepping forward, then this leg's going to be stepping backwards. So I'll grab the upper leg, rotate, restrict it to the x-axis, bring it back a little. And same thing with the lower leg, R, X. Bring that back a little, and then I'll grab his foot, rotate X, and bring that down. So there's um, part of the walk position. But when our right left leg is backwards then our right arm our left arm would be forward for the counterbalance so i'm gonna grab the forearm r to rotate x so we only rotate around the x and kind of swing that forward r x and just do little movements kind of like you do and our right wait which one is that uh yeah the right leg is forward so then we can grab the uh right arm and rotate that back for counterbalance. Yeah, I'll leave that about straight. So there's part of the walk animation. Um, that looks good. Good enough for now. It doesn't have to be perfect. We'll do better, better drafts come later. This is the rough draft of it. So A to select everything, 
I to insert that transform keyframe, location, rotation, and scale. And just like last time, I'll come up to 21, one frame past where it ends. Could change this because that is independent for each animation. I'll just keep it at 20 for now and insert another keyframe right past where it's going to loop so that it lines up smoothly. And halfway between, so around frame 10, I'll switch those positions. So this time, the left leg will come forward. So I'll rotate, whoops, hit escape. And Control Z is undo. So take your time uh, and undo stuff and get some practice with it. So R to rotate X so it's only around the X axis and bring that forward about as much as the left leg swung forward the first time. Um, R X rotate around the X. Uh, straighten up the knee. Come over here. Grab the upper left leg. Rotate around the x-axis, bring that backwards. The lower leg, rotate x. Bring that back for our step. And then the foot, rotate x. So it's on the ground. And then this foot, rotate x. So it's like stepping forward. And then our arms would be counterbalanced. So the left arm, left, the right, oh wait, which size is this? The right leg is backwards, so the right arm needs to go forwards. So the upper arm, then the lower arm, rotate X, bring that forward a little. And the left leg is forward, so the left arm needs to go back when walking. Rotate X, bring that back. And the forearm, rotate X. Just kind of straighten it out. That'll work. Maybe a little bit of a head bob with the walk. So rotate. There we go. So uh, that's the basic idea. We'll do a lot of that. This isn't the final draft, so I'm going to go with this no matter how it looks. A to select all, I to insert a keyframe. Now we have all our rotation data. Let's get back and give this animation a check. Not terrible. Uh, good enough for the rough draft. We can fix it later. It does take some practice, so you want to get some practice. So now we have two animations, but we want to make sure that those are stored in our data. So whichever game engine you're using, once you have your animations here, um, you'll choose one of them. So set the idle animation, and we need to push these on a stack. There's a button here for it, but there's a butter button. Uh, what you want to do is come up here or any of the windows. Um, I'll come up to this window and this uh, leftmost button at the top, that does, that's where we choose what we view here. So we could switch back to 3D viewport or we could um, look at the console where we run in Python code for and manually coding Blender. We could look at the timeline, same thing we have down at the bottom. What we want is the nonlinear animation. So it's like nonlinear animation and notice that Idle is highlighted, and this icon matches the icon down here that says push down. So this is where we will push that down onto our stack. So I'll push that down and save the idle animation. I'm not sure why this one's on here. I must have accidentally bumped the button. So I'm going to select this, and with that bottom one selected, push X to delete that one. So that gives us our idle animation. Notice it took it out of the action editor and pushed it onto a stack. So now I'll select the walk animation and likewise put push down. So now our idle and our walk are stored in a stack. They're checked, so they're, they're kept in our data. Um, I'll go ahead and put one of the animations back on because the one we see here is what we can preview if we go back to the Back here, we'll see that animation, so I'll just go ahead and leave that one on. But it's the stuff in that stack, um, the nonlinear animation window. The stuff in the stack is what actually the data we're keeping. So with all that there, hit save, make sure we get all those changes. And now we're ready to export that to bring into our game engine.
So every game engine kind of wants different ones. We're using Godot for our example, but again, this video set series is for game development in general, so it's not necessarily a Godot tutorial. Uh, I will have will be mentioning Unity and Unreal as we talk about shaders and stuff and other things in the game engine. Uh, so they all want a different one, like Unity wants FBX. For Godot, we want to export a GLTF 2.0, just like we saw with the landscape. Uh, still in the source folder here. And over here, if you don't see the options here, press N as uh, Niner. I guess that's the word I'm supposed to use to say N. Uh, so Niner and bring up this menu over here. And we want Embedded because that will put all of our information into one file. Um, include, make sure nothing is selected. So nothing selected. And it's just going to include everything in there. We only have the skeleton and the skin. So we want to include everything. On transform, make sure Y is up. That's how Godot will position our models. Um, data, just keep the defaults for now. And animation, make sure animation is checked. We'll get to shape keys in a later video. They're kind of a neat thing, but uh, so include everything in an embedded GLTF and make sure your animation is checked and export that. So now we are ready to bring that into our game engine. In the next few videos, we will be moving this character around that landscape that we already put in our land in our game engine. So I will see you in the next video and we'll bring where we bring this character into our game engine. And it'll be a minute before we get back to the modeling because now we have enough to uh, start building our world in the game engine and start doing stuff there. See you in the next video.